Hello everyone, today I will share another free custom tool that I use regularly while trading live markets. Please subscribe to this channel and like this video if you find this content valuable. Let's get started. Every instrument has different levels of activity. Even if all the hourly and daily charts look the same for every instrument, truly they can be deceptive. Just volume or bid and ask spread will not help decipher this for you. As an active trader, you want to trade active symbols only. Counting the tick bars in a session can give us a comparable view and an ability to make better decisions. Higher the number of tick bars in a session, higher the activity. And better are your chances to get in and out of the market safely. The fewer number of times an instrument trades throughout the day, you should be careful trading that instrument. The reason being, the order flow is very thin and the market maker will have an advantage over that particular instrument's order book. I have shared this previously in my educational courses. For the most part, all that are day trading or even swing trading will have direct competition with the market maker. I will show you how to achieve this using NinjaTrader 8 trading platform. You can follow along in your favorite trading platform as well to build this custom tool so you can use that in your live trading as well. Here is a picture where I have put together Apple, Tesla and Goldman Sachs, three different companies from three different sectors and all three charts are on the same 60 minute per candle setting. As you can see, basic structure and shape of these candles are similar. Looking at these charts side by side, it's almost impossible to say which stock trades more actively. Now to put things in perspective, I'm going to reload all three charts and here's an example on the screen for Goldman Sachs. I'm going to make the chart type to tick charts and I'm going to use thousand tick as the value for each bar. We will load last seven days worth of data. This screenshot is from May 7th. So the software will load last seven days of data from May 4th. Once we load all three charts for all three stocks, you can now clearly see the difference between the level of activity in these three stocks. On the extreme right side, the Goldman Sachs chart, you can see there are candles that you can count on your fingers for each session. And in the middle, you have Tesla, which is relatively more active than Goldman Sachs. And on the extreme left side is the chart for Apple, also a thousand tick chart. And you can clearly see I can barely fit two sessions in that same area as the rest of the two stocks. Now, take a look at this market analyzer at the bottom. You could see I have these three instruments listed there. Here's the column that contains the count of daily bars for all three instruments. By the way, intraday size and swing size, those two columns are using another custom tool that I have given out for free in my previous videos. So please check that out. The link for that video will be in the description box below. So. When we look at this extreme right column in the market analyzer, you can see Apple had 440 bars of 1000 ticks each in the last trading session. And Tesla had 80,000 tick bars in the last session. And Goldman Sachs only had 10 bars in the last session. So now you can clearly see the counts are so dramatically different. Even though this picture looks exactly the same for all three stocks and it's very hard to understand what is the difference in level of activity for these companies. So before we get into the basics of the code and how it was set up in the market analyzer, I want you to understand how you would use this. What you would want to do is set up a limit of minimum number of daily bars that you want in an instrument to trade it for an intraday trade. So let's say if you require your trading instrument to have at least 100 daily 
tick bars of a thousand ticks, you would put that filter in and automatically Tesla and Goldman Sachs will drop down from that list. I also want to mention that it does not mean that Tesla will not have 100 bars of 1000 ticks on some other day. It might happen. And when that happens, it would give you an alert that there is something important happening in Tesla. Especially if that's the case, you could rely more on the direction in which the price is moving, which means you could enter that trade and probably go for longer targets if you have a heightened activity in a stock. Let's hash out the requirements that we used to calculate tick bars from the last session. We used one day or one session for the instrument. We had a counter which is set for X number of tick bars, which means we should be able to change this number of ticks in one bar so that we can change. Let's say I want to count how many hundred tick bars exist in a day, or you want to change it to I want to count how many 2000 tick bars exist for an instrument. It depends on the pool of instruments that you're working on. It can also depend on the market cap of the stock. So bigger the market cap of the stock, they not necessarily, but they might have higher number of tick bars within a trading session. Also, we want to be able to display the number in the market analyzer. Once that number is in market analyzer, you can sort the column with that number either in an increasing order or a decreasing order. You can also create alerts within the market analyzer for a particular minimum number. You could make the market analyzer work such that it would give you a color, a highlighted color, so that you can promptly notice a change in the tick numbers. Here is the code. It is fairly simple. We're just using one variable called the count and the counter starts at the first bar of the session. So every instrument will have a different trading session. What I mean by that is an index futures contract will start trading around 3 p.m. Pacific time, which is 6 p.m. New York time and a stock might start trading at 4 a.m. New York time or 1 a.m. Pacific time. So depending on your session start time for the instruments that you're analyzing, the counter will start at that point. It will update or add one to the counter every time there's a new bar formed. So here, if you look at the code, it just updates the count by one every time one bar completes. And we are holding the count for the day in another variable which we're going to display as the daily BC. This is only done to get around that gap in sessions over the weekend and over the long weekends. Again, this code is available for you to download as a script, as a ninja script, which you can import and start using right now. Every platform has a different way of coding these custom tools. So you will have to refer to your trading platforms, programming guides to do so. I believe you could easily program something like this in Thinkorswim platform for TD Ameritrade. You could also program something like this very easily in TradeStation. Once you import this indicator in Market Analyzer, what you will have to do is set up the settings for this counter. You can always rename the name of how the column should read. If there's not enough space, you can change the name to just a counter or TC to mark tick counter. In the input series, you can see all you have to do is select tick as the type and change the value to whatever you want to use. I have kept it to 1000. You could keep it to 300 or 3000 depending on your need. Always make sure you load at least two days of data because on the weekends, Saturdays and Sundays, you will have no data and your counter might read zero on Monday morning. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have some number available for you on Monday morning for reference. And if you want to take care of the long weekends, which happen from time to time, you would want to keep that number as three. That way you would have the Friday's count or Thursday's count, depending on what type of long weekend it is, to be available to you on the first trading session day in a fresh new week.
if you have not looked at my free trader education course so far i would highly recommend to click the link in the description box and go check out this trading course this course is made for anyone that wants to pursue trading as a profession this trader education course is complete it has 12 modules and many many great resources that you need to be able to compete with today's markets the trading environment is managed by algorithms and quantitative software so in order to gain a, your edge against these companies and these computers you need to also think like them within this trader education course you will learn how to build these custom tools how you should approach building these custom tools and then come up with strategies that you can back test and then trade the live market with confidence Remember, the confidence comes from data. It doesn't come from your feelings. It doesn't come from someone else that has traded something successfully and they're sharing that with you. Unless you can see the data behind the strategy that tells you that, okay, this strategy will be profitable, you know, 50% of the times and you're risking two to one. So you will end up making money that will give you the confidence. You have to either calculate the back test on your own or should be provided with the back test for the strategy that is being taught to you. So here's my S&P 500 index based trading strategy course. This course is continuation of the free trader education course. This strategy course will educate you how to build a proper working real life trading strategy. This strategy is built on S&P 500 index, which means this strategy is very risk averse in the sense you can make more mistakes while trading this strategy and it still would be profitable. In this course, you will learn how to take an idea about trading something and then test it over real past historical market data and see if this strategy or this idea that you have will work or not. Once you have tested it and you know that this strategy has worked previously, you could start trading that strategy in the live market. I recently added a new chapter to this strategy course. In this chapter, I have shown how to re-optimize your trading strategy once the market conditions or the trading environment changes because of maybe changes in the fundamentals. A trading environment could change because of the participants have changed in the sense it could be a bull market and now it's a bear market and the trading environment could change because of Fed actions. Maybe the interest rates are going up or down or it could change because of geopolitical environment like the Ukraine war or coronavirus is in the news again and that could impact the market behavior. So this chapter shows you how to re-optimize your trading strategy to give you the correct signals readjust the parameters of your trading strategy so you can achieve a profitable profit factor. Just as a recap, our reliable trading strategy that is built in this course delivers a profit factor greater than two that you can start using immediately. I really hope that you found some value in this content. Please like, share and subscribe to this channel. I'm going to continue producing content that will be helpful for any outsider that wants to learn trading and be successful in this profession. I'll catch you guys later. Happy trading.